So my name is uh, Ronnie Tokazowski. Um, I am a principal threat advisor with a company called CoFence. Um, and you are sitting in the worst presentation of the day. Um, what I mean by that is I don't plan to sugarcoat any of the stuff that's happening on the business email compromise side. Um, I've been tracking this for eight years. And when I submitted this presentation, um, I didn't know if it was gonna be accepted or not because of some of the things that I'll be covering. However, it's something where, like I said, we're seeing a lot of damages and I want to give it as straight as I can. Um, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get it kicked off. So, I, so we needed to have this RSA disclaimer saying presentations are intended for educational purposes only. So blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Um, so, but in addition to that, I will be covering some sensitive topics here. So if you need to step out, step out. I promise I will not heckle you. Um, in addition to that, if you want to take pictures, if you want to post any of this stuff on social media, um, if you want to send a picture to your grandmother, please do, because it's something where we need to all come together to start understanding how this works. Um, so I know some presenters are very iffy about having pictures taken and having to throw it on social media. No, take pictures, socialize it, whatever. So a um, little bit about me. Um, like I said, my name is uh, Ronnie, uh, Principal Threat Advisor with a company called CoFence. Um, a lot of people on the Twitter sphere know me under the handle of iHeartMalware. Um, I have started dabbling in YouTube and TikTok. Um, YouTube, being a YouTuber kind of came by mistake. Uh, some folks may have seen my content on LinkedIn where I'll do like little snippets and say, here's how BEC works, here's how romance scams work, here's how this latest news or this company was hacked. And I try and do that as a way to be informative and get that information out as quickly as I can. In addition to that, I also like building communities and helping people because at the end of the day, unless we're working with each other and trying to make a difference and all collaborating here, none of this is gonna get fixed. So what I will be covering, I will be covering what the definitions of BEC are. There's a lot of stigmas and mindsets and perception, and you have a lot of vendors who are gonna be trying to sell you blinky boxes and solutions in order to fix this. There's no blinky box that's gonna fix this problem. You can quote me on that. Um, I will be talking on the damages and the impacts that we see. I'll also be digging into the music and the subculture that we find as it relates to business email compromise. In addition to that, I will be kind of walking through some of the victim stories that we have heard, some of the things that I have heard walking around, um, talking with people in the venue this week. And in addition to that, I'll kind of talk through why collaboration is key. That's a constant theme with RSA is because at the end of the day, we all have to come together in order to kind of do what we can in order to track this. And in addition to that, I'll be closing out with what you can do, what you can leave here with and actually go implement into your organization without asking for a penny. Find me another presentation at RSA that's gonna do that. Find another vendor who's gonna say, here's something free to do to go fix. So there's not many of us out here. So I've been tracking BEC for eight years now. Um, I've worked with a lot of law enforcement, and I've worked with a lot of private sector, I've worked with a lot of organizations, I've done a lot of research into this. So collectively as a whole, we have done an amazing job. We have had thousands of scammers arrested, we have had hundreds and thousands of romance victims saved, um, in addition to that, we have obliterated thousands and tens of thousands of bank accounts. And a lot of times with those bank accounts, they tie back to a money mule. So when you have one of those bank accounts that goes and gets taken care of, then you are able to do the recovery and help the, mute, the, re, the victim recover. In addition to that, we've cr increased col collaboration across virtually every sector. How many presenters can say, I have actually seen law enforcement collaborating more? We have broken down walls of communication that have been there for decades because of how large this problem is. And in addition to that, we've also taken a huge dive to understand the true scope of what business email compromise is. With that being said, we're not done yet. We now know what the true scope of BEC is. And it's something where it is not fun. It is kind of like a dumpster fire of a hot mess that like is being on fire by ninjas and stuff. That was louder than I thought. Um, and for those who are watching the recording, I just threw a dumpster fire on the floor. Um, but the true scope of BEC and where we kind of stand right now is we are maybe touching 1% of the 1%. And that is a hard pill to swallow as somebody who has been tracking this for eight years. Like I said, we have built communities. We have thousands of people who's working on this, but this is the reality right here, right now, whatever today's date is, as I'm presenting to you, this is where we stand with, and when it comes to business email compromise. Um, I'll kind of explain more some of those gaps and hopefully you leave this room questioning your reality because like I said, it's a lot of very difficult things here um, to that we've been tracking. So to get this kicked off, most people in the room may know what business email compromise, but 
what do I track it as? What do I constitute BEC as? So business email compromise is usually when someone will pretend to be the CEO of your company and say, hey, I am Rohit Balani. I am the CEO here. Can you wire something over to me? I need this urgent wire transfer. Or, hey, I am this person over here. Can you go and send me gift cards? I need to go and do this thing for the employees over here. I need your help to do that. But keep it quiet. Don't tell anybody that I'm going to ask you to do that. And what happens is, is we see people go and respond back and be like, why, yes, I want to go ahead and impress you, uh, CEO person. You're the one who owes the company. I want to go ahead and do everything I can to impress you because that might get me a bonus. That might make it to where I can go and be good for you and, again, maybe get a raise, maybe get a promotion. And for a lot of the victims, that's what goes through their heads when they're doing this. In some cases, they may be absolutely terrified because, like, I need to go do this really urgent thing over here. Um, but, again, that's what happens. In addition to that, we've seen cases where we have fake invoices tied back to this. We have seen check frauds, direct deposit scams, and we've seen dozens of other crimes that are related back to this. But the problem is, right now, the threat actors are getting really, really good. And I know earlier I mentioned that from a scoping perspective that we're starting to understand the full scope, but it's kind of like Schrodinger's cat where we know we're starting to understand the full scope, but a full scope of this problem does not exist. And the reason is, per FBI statistics coming out of the IC3, we know over $50 billion has been sold through BEC. That might sound like a big number, and it is, but let me paint you a little bit of a different picture here. So when it comes to unemployment fraud, which is something that scammers who were dabbling in BEC were also doing, we lost over $100 billion as a, as a result of that. In addition to that, we also lost over $72 billion as a result of SBA fraud. Scammers who were doing BEC figured out that they can go after the SBA system and start hitting many other things. Um, in addition to that, we have over 300,000 romance scam victims all across the world that we know of. And because of the shame and the stigmas that I'll be covering here in a little bit, um, this is not the full picture. In addition to that, with many of the victims, the emotional damage and trauma that gets stuck in their bodies that they don't know how to shake is absolutely horrible because, again, these are human things that are happening that we need to understand. Um, in addition to that, many of the local crimes that we find related back to BEC are literally done by cultists who dabble in black magic and voodoo. And I'll be, again, I'll be covering some of that here at the end. And again, because of this, because of the stigmas, because of two dozen other things, a lot of this gets extremely underreported. For crimes that we have actually found directly related back to business email compromise, here is a small list, and this is not a fully inclusive list. This is just what I could fit on my slides with having this a bit little text because, you know, when you make slides, you say, oh, you have to use 24 font area size aerial in order to do this, but this is limited to what I was able to put up there. Um, some of these may seem far-fetched for some people. However, I can say with 100% accuracy, we have definitively seen BEC actors, Yahoo boys, Sakawa boys, people who are dabbling in all of these things directly involved in many of these other cases. Um, while I was over at Agari, before I was over here at Cofence, uh, we did a study on a group called Scattered Canary. And they were very much our canary into the coal mine, which was why we named them that, that kind of walked through and explained, here are all of the other crimes that they were relating to. So if you think of back to the traditional concept of your Nigerian print scams, your 419 scams, BEC is the new version of that. BEC is the new version where we have understood that that is now how we track them targeting the corporate enterprise crime. But when it comes to tracking this, it's something where that, this crime goes back decades. And it, again, loops back to that consumer side when it comes to the 419 side. Um, in addition to that, when it comes to a global perspective, again, this is what just what we know. This is not the full scope. We have victims in 177 countries, of uh, it's like Taibo, but of 195 countries in the world. So to put that in perspective, we have victims right now, 2023, in 90% of the globe. In addition to that, we know money has been wired to 140 countries of 193 countries. Did I pull this number out of thin air? Did I talk to my sales and marketing team in order to do this? No. This comes directly from FBI statistics. These are not my numbers here. These are the FBI's. And when it comes to understanding this, we have hundreds of thousands and millions of victims globally, again, that we know of. The unfortunate thing is when it comes to educating the users who are targeted with this, there's a very poor structure in order to actually educate them. In addition to that, if you go outside of the United States, Canada, 
Europe and several of the other countries that are more mature and have a more mature security organization, you're, it's very hard to actually get law enforcement to do stuff. Um, I had one victim who reached out to me personally on my personal Facebook pro on my personal Facebook page from Poland, asking look, on guidance in order to go and do this stuff. And it's something where, and I have seen so many cases where researchers who are doing this will have victims intentionally reaching out to them. Again, this is a global problem, and we know that there are victims all around the world, and they have very little support. Um, and the reason we got here, and the reason that we're in this wonderful dumpster fire of a hot mess being chased by ninjas with gasoline all on top, um, is because there are so many stigmas in the industry that when it comes to tracking a lot of things, you can go and buy any blinky solution that's gonna sell you, oh, we're gonna sell you every single thing we know about ransomware, we're gonna go stop your crime or problem, and you're never gonna have it. But for, 20, for over 20 years, every single people in the industry has said no when it comes to ransomware, when it comes to 419 scam, those are simple. Those are something that we can't really do much with. And I can say that from personal perspective because when I was tracking APT stuff, I was one of those people who was saying the exact same thing. And it's something where we really need to kind of start rethinking how we're doing this because at the end of the day, uh, that Nigerian prince who we saw and used to laugh at, that person is a king. And it's something where we have seen all of these things coming around and they're living large. They're living very large. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started talking on the business focus side and kind of walk through what we see in the industry from our organization, what actually targets our companies. Then I'll be kind of walking through the consumer side because when it comes to tracking the BEC, when it comes to targeting both of these, we can focus on the business side, but at the end of the day, there's multiple pieces that relate back and forth to each other. And again, the consumer side is just as important in regards to this. So when it comes to BEC, again, this is very much a mixed threat where people will go and it's a mix with consumer fraud. A lot of times you might have your traditional, using your air quotes here, BEC, where they're targeting the CEO, where it might overlap with consumer fraud. Um, but at the end of the day, your actors will do everything they can in order to follow the money. They will go and open a bank account. They will go and get gift cards. They will go and work with cryptocurrencies and they will learn how to do that and do that effectively just to go ahead and start taking advantage of your employees. But again, the way that I like to word it is when it comes to BEC attacks, if you think of it in the context where how can you wire money, that's what the scammers are gonna do, is they're going to go ahead and do anything they can to actually wire that money. When it comes to gift cards, we actually did a really, really fun study over at CoFence where we actually took gift cards and gave them to scammers Wait, what, you actually got the approval to give scammers gift cards? Yeah, we did, it was a cool project. And we actually found some really, really interesting stuff. So we went and we looked through dozens of BEC phishing emails and identified the ones that gift cards could actually be sent. Um, and in a, looking at that, a lot of those tend to be your urgent task. Hey, go do this urgent task for me. Or hey, I'm gonna go and do these, give you this employee gift card. Um, a lot of cases when it comes down to this type of attack, these even happen over SMS too. You might be getting texts from your CEO saying, hey, I need you to go and do this transfer for me. Um, ironically, a lot of security industry, a lot of security organizations are targeted too. I have had my CEO message me multiple times asking me to go purchase gift cards. I'm like, you're not my CEO. Tell me where you are. I wanna learn everything about your life in Nigeria. Let's go ahead and have an interview and talk because it's something where when you go and give them that information, it actually throws their pretext off but you, when you talk to them and treat them like a human, you get some really cool information. But back to the gift cards. Um, how quickly does it take in order to cash out these gift cards? Um, in many cases, it can actually be minutes in order for them to cash it out. And the way it works is they will use gift card to cryptocurrency exchanges, um, such as Paxful, in order to, or No One's Now, or Noon's Nodes, no, yeah, I don't know how they're pronouncing it now. But that's what they'll do, is they will use that in order to cash that money out. Um, and in the study, what we did was it was a three-phase process. We actually identified, okay, can we tell if it's a gift card in the first step? Can we know from there how many steps it takes in order to identify what it is? And then from there, once we were able, in phase three, we were able to figure out, okay, is this something where we can actually give them a gift card? And that's what we did was we started with $500 of gift cards, $25 of denominations, and we made sure to purchase cards that we could track on the back end. Um, some of the things that we found when we did this Amazingly, believe it or not, it's hard to get the scammers to actually buy the gift cards because what happens is they're so used to organizations sending them 
in 100, $500 denominations that when you give them a $25 gift card, they're like, this is weird. I'm not used to that. They, like, they don't know what to do. And in many cases, when they would go and actually do that, they would fight you for taking the card. Like, there was one instance where I had to go back and forth and be like, three times. I'm like, yes, this is the card I'm trying to give you. And he eventually cashed it out and, sold, and stole it. Um, in addition to that, when it comes to cashing out the gift cards, they move very quickly. So within 24 hours from providing the card to the card being in the hands of the scammers to being sold on these underground markets to being able to see transactions tied back to that, tying back to what was being purchased under 24 hours in virtually every single case that we saw with that. Um, and when it comes to tracking bank account transactions, there's limits where we know within like 72 hours we can usually reverse the money. But in the case of gift card fraud, this is something that no one is tracking right now. But in addition to that, a lot of the vendors who are, who are processing these things have the keys. But again, it's very hard to see. The other thing too, some of the scammers had identity crises because they were engaging with multiple people from the same account. So you would frequently see them changing their names. Um, some of the things that we did find, like I said, from some of the purchases that we saw, um, in one case, we saw them purchasing uh, TikTok Live accounts where they had access to go and use Google Play in order to purchase that. The most interesting thing with that is when they purchased it, the TikTok Live was purchased um, five times on the card. What that means is that wasn't five single months that they had actually purchased. That was five separate accounts that tied back to them trying to go and have live video shares. Um, in addition to that, we saw them purchasing Amtrak tickets up in New York. I don't know why, but we, again, this is just, we're just providing the data. We also saw a service called Fluzaway, which is responsible for sending gift cards back and forth based on getting rewards. But the, but the most interesting thing, and something that we haven't really publicly talked about, uh, uh, there you go, wrong button. But if you look at the number here that I have underlined, that 646, that's actually a phone number. And one of the things that we had learned working with one of our credit card providers is that this description field can be virtually anything. So when you have a credit card transaction, this is somewhat free form. And if you look over here, you see this place that's called PF Gift G Shop. And again, you see a correlation there. But when you look at this number here, it's the exact same number. So whoever was the ones who's using this on the back end of whatever provider has this being used, this is still the same phone number and ties back to the same service. And this was a very weird thing that we had observed in addition um, as being related to that. We also saw cases where we, the only reference we had was like a um, toy company in Myanmar being purchased. So like I said, really weird stuff that we saw. Um, I also mentioned Paxful, and I'm, th I'm glad I was able to get this into my presentation last minute, but Paxful is officially closing down. It turns out that there was a lot of problems with um, selling gift cards and selling cryptocurrencies online. Turns out the US regulators are not a fan, and it turns out that there was a lot of lawsuits going against Paxful in this. Um, if you read the stories and read the headlines, it, many of them read like the Wolf of Wall Street, where you had cases of drugs in the office. You had a lot of shady deals going on. And in addition to that, there was an employee who came public and actually documented some of these things and said, hey, from my experience, here's what I personally saw. Um, I would encourage you to go and read those articles and just kind of get a full understanding on that. A lot of the services are now moving to a place called No Ones, um, or like I said, noons.com, where it's virtually a copy of Paxful that can do the same thing. So much so of a copy that the people who had a Paxful account were able to use their same username and password to log into the new platform. Is that something shady when the lawsuits are going on? I don't know, but I'm just putting it out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get kicked off into the consumer fraud side. And when it comes to BEC, when it comes to money being wired, it's bad when, when a company loses money. Don't get me wrong. It's bad when a ransomware attack happens. Don't get me wrong on that. But the consumer fraud side is where the damages are actually happening. So what I mean by that is when you have the money that's being wired, a lot of the times when it comes to this type of scam, that type of scam, um, your regular general public are the ones who are falling victim for this. And what happens is they will be pulled into multiple different types of jobs, different types of romance scams or what they believe are in order to go, for, in order to go forward for this. Um, and there's been many times where I've seen this and in virtually every single BEC case it is never just BEC. 
I had one instance where we had a vendor email compromise that had a check being sent to a work from home victim. That work from home victim sent that check to a romance scam victim. The check was in the romance scam victim's name, so it went through the work from home guy. Work from home guy thought he was wiring a check for this business transaction. Romance scam victim then sent 15, had then deposited the check, uh, taken $15,000 cash out, sent that into a FedEx box to another state, and that's where we lost it. In every single one of those cases, it crosses a state line. In every single one of those cases, it was under your federal limit in order to actually try and figure that out. And in every single case, those are all different law enforcement offices that would be very difficult to actually collaborate because you now have four different victims tied back to this. And that's one of the biggest problems is when it comes to a lot of these crimes, it's a very complex issue that ties back to that. Um, when it comes to working with romance scam victims, romance scam victims are very much that underlying money mulling network. And I know I had this mindset before going into this, but a lot of times, a lot of people will ask and think, how could somebody fall for this? At the end of the day, us as humans, we all want one thing. Every single person in this room wants one thing. We want to love and we want to be loved. And the reason I was able to find that was because I actually got to talking with a romance victim who was in the scam for over 10 years. She lost her family, lost her husband, lost custody of her kids. And I asked her, I'm like, what kept you in there? And that was her answer. She's like, my husband was abusive and I just wanted to be loved. And again, that's something every single one of us wants is we want to be loved, appreciated. And again, with a lot of the victims, they're seeing these messages in real time. They have pictures that are being sent. And it's something where that's, it moves away from, okay, no one would fall for this to now anybody would fall for this. Because if you're going and trying to date somebody, if you're trying to find a relationship, you're gonna be more susceptible to that. In addition to that, there's another area of crime called pig butchering, which is a combination of crypto and investment scams. I have had discussions with two, information security professionals who have fallen victim to this very scam. One of those people, many of the people in here would know that person, $90,000. He sent $90,000 for a crypto investment because he thought he was in a relationship in our field. And it's something where because of the stigmas that are tied to this, it's something where people are not talking about this. Now, when it comes to being a victim, when it comes to being victimized for this, this is some of the hardest stuff to kind of come to terms with. Many of those victims feel shame they become anxious and depressed. And in addition to that, they actually physically become, dis they become disconnected from their emotions. If you're unfamiliar with that, what happens is it's actually called disassociation, where you will consciously do everything you can to distract your mind from feeling a lot of the other emotions that are in your body. For us, from our neck down, we actually have emotions and we can feel other parts of our body. For many of these victims, they will do everything that they can and think everything they can in order to not come to terms with that. However, when it comes to how our bodies work, the way our nervous system works, the way all of our muscles are ingrained, when you go and try and not feel that negative emotion, it's gonna come back tenfold. And when you have sent all this money, when you have done all this stuff, that pain keeps getting higher and higher, which results in a lot of these victims becoming suicidal. I was speaking with somebody earlier this week where they said that um, one of their, they were working with somebody where their grandfather had committed suicide, jumped off a mountain in order to get away from stuff. They didn't, couldn't understand why, then they went to go through his records. Turns out he was part of a pig butchering scam. Five million dollars. We've had cases with working with some other romance victims where they were, the one sister came in order to do a check on, the, on, the, on her and everything, found her hanging. Thankfully we were able to save her and stuff, but it's something where the human lives that we have seen lost to this are absolutely devastating. And when it comes to suicide, people taking their own lives, this is not an uncommon thing when it comes to tracking these things. This is a more common thing than not. Because what happens is for many of those victims, they feel hopeless and don't know how to actually shake that feeling in their body. But and they, in addition to that, they actually forget how to feel. The cool thing though, is that when it comes to the way our bodies work, is that there's actually techniques that you can use in order to reconnect your mind and your body and start feeling again. A lot of that actually ties back to breath work and different types of things like that, where you can actually breathe in really big, breathe out really big, and again, calm your body down. So I want everybody to sit up really straight. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this works. So 
in your head, take a scale of one to 10 on like how your body feels. Do you feel anxious? Do you feel nervous? Do you feel a little bit hungover from, the, from last night because you were out drinking all night and everything? I'm gonna assume no, because everyone was here at 9.50 and you guys are awesome. So, but here's the way it works. So take, take, take a big breath in through your stomach. Again, you're gonna focus on here. So take a big breath in, hold it at the top, and then in through your nose, one more sniff, and then out like you're fogging glass. Do that two more times. Now, that collective calmness that you're feeling, for many of these victims, they can't feel that right now. They are so in pain and struggling so much that they don't know how to feel that. And with working with many of the victims in order to calm their bodies down, it is that quick. How many people's bodies are more calm because of that? Every one of y'all. So we can do things to calm our bodies down. And again, when it comes to feeling an emotion, I don't wanna say that emotions are universal, but we will feel things in our liver, we'll feel things in our stomach, we'll feel things in our intestine. And again, that's how our bodies work. There was a really, really cool study that walked through where emotions are felt in order to try and get to a universal language where people will feel anger here, they will feel happiness here, they will feel love here, and you will feel it all over your body. What happens with many of the victims, and I know this was a problem, this was something that I have had to work on too, that because we get stuck, we don't want to feel from our neck down. And because of past traumas, that literally gets stuck in our bodies. Um, and so much so that there is a book that I put in the bookstore called The Body Keeps a Score that actually walks through how our, our, a lot of our pain, a lot of our trauma, a lot of our past issues, where we will be feeling something and not want to feel it, where we may have been told you're not a good person, or we may have been told you're not good enough as a kid, that sticks with you. That shapes your personality. That shapes a lot of the way that you do things. Or if you went through a very abusive relationship, that shapes how you are. And again, that's kind of why I want to, that's the, one of the biggest takeaways here is romance scam victims are very much a key in this BEC cog because at the end of the day, they're the ones taking the fall for their lovers. They're the ones who are actually doing a lot of this stuff and they end up mentally and emotionally destroyed. Um, again, PTSD are very real problems here. And if we didn't have romance scam victims, if we didn't have these money mules, BEC would look very different. So when it comes to tracking this stuff, horrible, horrible stuff that's going on. So who are the jerks? And I didn't want to say jerks, but who are the folks who are actually behind this, who are doing a lot of this thing? So when you go and track a lot of different types of stock crime, when you go and track a lot of BEC, that tends to tie back to what is called a Yahoo boy. That name came back from when the scammers were doing uh, different types of um, cyber crime back in the 90s using the service of Yahoo, and, or using yahoo.com. And they have since taken that term, went ahead and used it, and, and are kind of <coughs> continuing to use that. In addition to that, because things like voodoo and juju are popular in Nigeria and you have a lot of cult-like religions, um, you can become what's called a Yahoo Boy Plus. In order to become a Yahoo Boy Plus, it's a spiritual ritual that some of the people can do that involves a human sacrifice. So when you sacrifice that human, you become a better scammer. That's how you become a Yahoo Boy Plus. In addition to that, when it comes to doing a lot of other things, many of the scammers are very flashy, have very low morals. And again, they will actually use juju uh, again, or voodoo in order to extract money from their victims. The way that this works is that what they'll do is they will do this in order to enhance their abilities. Um, they'll do different rituals. Some of these rituals can include bringing a picture to your native doctor to say, hey, here's the person I'm trying to take money from, or here's the client, as they call in order to justify their behavior, but here's the client I'm trying to take money from. Um, I need a blessing, I need to go ahead and do this thing, and then the native doctor, you can pay them a certain amount of money, and they will go ahead and be able to extract that um, stuff from there. In some cases, you might be able to use a certain type of spiritual black soap where you can wash your body over a grave, get more powers in order to kind of do this. Um, or again, tying back to the human sacrifice side. Um, working with law enforcement, we actually had a, uh, a case that included a pile of money covered with blood and dead chickens in South Africa. And you're like, what the heck? Why would they use that? So uh, law enforcement obviously went and uh, talked to him and was like, what's this? What, why that and everything? And you think, well, the, you'd think this was a person would explain something that would make logical sense. And what they came back was like, well, 
turns out the magic down here in South Africa is not as strong as the juju in Nigeria, so we needed a bigger pile of money. And that was why they had that big pile of money in order to do that. Um, and again, when it comes to working with a lot of the scammers, many of them will intentionally remove their emotions. And if you want to look on the brain chemistry side, our prefrontal cortex, which is actually the front part of our head, is responsible for a lot of emotions. And I have not studied this, I have not actually looked this up, but I will almost guarantee that if you were to go and do brain scans on many of these, on many of these scammers, they would have smaller pre prefrontal cortexes because again, when it comes to feeling empathy, when it comes to feeling emotions of somebody else, that's where a lot of it starts. And with a lot of the scammers, they will actually laugh at the crying victim and they will make fun of that person who's being very, who they're being abusive to. Um, again, when you look at the fact that it's a sociopath who can't feel emotion, who dabbles in dark magic, I mean, I don't know what your definition of evil is, but I'd say that's pretty damn close, so. So when it comes to the people, again, when it comes to more people who are doing this, there is a group of Nigerians called Black Axe. Um, a lot of them fly under the handle of the neo-black movement, but again, that is just a front organization for a lot of the, for a lot of the, uh, for a lot of the people who do this. Um, that, came, that reference came back from Can Canadian law enforcement where NBM and Black Axe are, defi are defined as a terrorist organization. Um, what they do, um, again, they're very much dabble in black magic and voodoo, where they will go and use this in order to gain different rituals, in order to gain different powers on this. In many cases, you have a lot of cult activity where they will actually go and murder people. Um, and you will have other, in addition to that, you have many other cults who are involved in this too. Um, Black Axe has also been responsible for a lot of human trafficking too. They also do, uh, they also run a lot of escort activity in Italy. Um, and again, they're very much an international criminal syndicate. And if you want to watch a really, really good documentary, um, BBC put out an amazing, amazing, amazing documentary on like a two year study into Black Axe. What are some of the things that drive them? What are some of the things that they do? And when you go and watch the video, it literally has like two or three prompts of like, this is disturbing material. But like I said, highly, highly, highly recommend it if you're curious on how this stuff actually works. So for pictures and references, um, what you're looking at is you're looking at some of the cult activity that has been public. Um, my source of reference here uh, was a small website. Um, I think everybody would, would know what it's called. It's called YouTube. It's where a lot of this stuff has been released, a lot of it is public, and you will see these people doing rituals. So here on the left, you have an instance where they're all lined up, and in this video, they were washing in the river with soap. Right here, you have, um, I think, if I remember, I think it was a candle with like some charcoal around, some charm made up. Um, and like I said, this one here, when I reference the black soap, this is what they're doing is they're wearing their, ro their uh, spiritual robes in order to wash above the graves, again, in order to become a better scammer. Um, here, you have references of them burning incense to, I think this was DeVito, the rapper DeVito, um, and he came out that he was pissed that they were doing this, again, trying to, uh, tr again, trying to pull spiritual powers from him in order to become a better scammer, again. Sounds way out there, sounds like I'm talking aliens and conspiracy theories here, but it's something where, again, this is what they actually believe. And right here on the right, um, you see three, um, three middle-aged boys who are using a ram, who are getting the blood of a ram on top of their heads in order to go and be better scammers. This is what is causing the number one cyber crime in the world right now. Well, actually, let me take that back. The number one cyber crime from last year and before for eight year, for seven years in a row. The newest number one cybercrime is pig butchering, which ties back to human trafficking victims who are being held in places like Myanmar, Cambodia, and Laos, Thailand and Laos, who are being forced in order to go ahead and do romance scams. And what they're doing is they're doing romance scams, investment fraud, and a whole lot of other stuff. And like I said, this is what we're seeing as it relates to it. And like I said, that's why I put this disclaimer up here is because this is not fun stuff to research. This is not enjoyable. I do not enjoy doing any of this, but I want to give it as straight as I can because like I said, this is what is happening on the ground and what drives BEC that hits our organizations today. This is what's responsible for over $500 billion in fraud. And if we actually extrapolate that out and include the things that we're not tracking, that is easily a trillion dollars in fraud that we have found as a result of people just wanting to live. And what I mean by people just wanting to live, let's go ahead and start talking about Nigerian culture. What would even make somebody drive somebody to the point where they think it's okay to go and literally murder somebody to continue scamming somebody else? So when it comes to Nigerian uh, culture, 
it's very, very complicated. Um, when it comes to working a lot of types of crime, you're, you also have a lot of greed that's in Nigeria. You have a lot of people who want to go and do well. Um, in addition to that, you've got a level of family peer pressure. You've got cultural peer pressure in order to go and be a scammer. When you go and look at the culture in Nigeria, it's more acceptable to be a scammer than it is to be legitimate. And in addition to that, the reason that you have that is because you have an entire subculture in Nigeria who has, excuse me, who has rapped and sang praises for decades. You have rappers who are saying, we're doing really good at scamming, come be a Yahoo boy. You have some scammers who are literally called local scammer where they're taking videos inside of Targets, inside of Walmarts, outside of T-Mobiles, saying, hey, look at all the stuff that we stole. That's how brazen these guys are. And if you wanna see those videos, they're called the G4 boys. Pull them up on YouTube. They have tens of millions of views right now. Like, no, seriously, take your phones out, put G4 boys in there and make a reference. Watch the videos later. It will piss you off. And if it doesn't, rethink your priorities, please. Uh, but, <laughs> but it's something where, again, when it comes to working with this, for an emotional perspective, is this something where they're really bragging or are they trying to come to terms and justify their behavior? Because what happens is, again, going back to the body keeps the score, that's a lot of damage that they're doing and they, many of them know it's wrong, but they keep doing it anyway. But with that being said, life in Nigeria is complex. When it comes to working in there, there's a lot of external corruption that has actually come into, the, and that has come into Nigeria. When we look at how oil went into Nigeria, it was something where big oil went in and they actually went into a lot of the smaller tribes who had been there for 2,000 years. And within a couple of decades, they absolutely left the place covered in oil. You had people who were dying from cancer over there because of a lot of that. And a lot of the mindset is, let's take advantage of Nigeria. And again, it becomes very, very hard to just live in Nigeria. There are military coups that happen. And the way, if you want to go be a military leader, if you want to go be president, go do a military coup. Black Axe, who I was referencing earlier, has people embedded inside of the Nigerian government and they're public about it. They're not, they don't try and hide that. They're like, no, we actually have people embedded in here and you can see it when the people go to the polls. People have been politically murdered because of that. And again, that's a lot of the culture there that we're dealing with. Um, in the Northern side of Nigeria, if you were to draw a Christian and Muslim line, you also got uh, Boko Haram that will influence a lot of stuff down there. So they actually have to care about that too. Um, in addition to that, like I said, you have the cults and confraternities like Black Hacks, like Air Lord, like um, the Sea Lords who are dabbling in this. But again, at the end of the day, people are like me and you. We all have families here. We all want to live. We all want to thrive. And it's something where for many Nigerians, they don't have that luxury. They have to go and work extremely hard in order to just live. And at the end of the day, you literally have starving people who are trying to survive, who are trying to just live, who are trying to provide for their families. The current unemployment rate for the youth between the ages 15 and 35 is 50%. Literally half of the youth over there have no jobs, have no prospect, have no ways in order to go ahead and actually try and make money. Um, briberies are publicly acceptable. Um, and in addition to that, you also have a level of pe family peer pressure where some mothers will tell their kids, no, you need to go be a scammer in order to do this. One of the intelligence sources that I work with on the ground who was a reform scammer after watching one of my videos where I called out the scammer like, you guys are doing horrible stuff. He came to me in tears, suicidal, saying, my mom wants me to go be a scammer because I'm not getting enough money. And that's the reality here is that you actually have people who are seeing that much pressure who just want to live. How, think of, take your salary, think of how much you make in your head and everything, and the salary over there in Nigeria is $100 per month. That's the average salary for somebody over there. And, it, and when you go and look at it from that perspective, the problem that when it comes to a lot of things like BEC, like Nigerian fraud, like a lot of this, the reality is the people have to choose a steal to eat or die. So with that being said, when it comes to a lot of this stuff, the first step to BEC is actually acknowledge it, actually realize that this is a problem. Um, in many cases, working with local law enforcement, these losses are not reported. So many of these things go underreported. And at the end of the day, most of your banks and financial institutions can write these off. Um, if you know of somebody who has been a victim, if you are a victim yourself, um, 
report it. And the reason I say that is because these scammers from a lot of intelligence that we've seen in virtually every single case, there's more than just one victim that they're hitting from a bank account, from a email account. They're hitting 20 other victims. We've seen cases where they've sent hundreds of phishing emails from the same account. So even if you are trying to report the stuff, report it. There's places like IC3, FCC has stuff, um, NCA. Um, you've also got Secret Service who does a lot of this work too, who's actually trying to track a lot of these things. But again, report the stuff even if you're not a victim because this is what we use in order to go ahead and actually track a lot of this stuff. In addition to that, the best line of defense when it comes to uh, understanding business email compromise is not some AI learning blinky box that you're gonna buy on the RSA floor. It's actually educating your users and embracing their knowledge because no matter how much AI you throw at a problem, the scammers will figure out a way and you will continue that loop. You actually have to embrace your users and educate them because it's something where at the end of the day, they're your last line of defense. How many people would hire a stupid employee? Absolutely none of you. So if you would not hire a stupid employee, is the onus on us, sorry, sorry Mike, uh, but is the onus on us for not putting material in a way that they understand? That's what we need to do is we need to start putting things in their context, in their way, in their words, so that it actually resonates with them. Um, and again, your employees are actually smart and at the end of the day, they're a lot, they're really good sensors. Um, I, and because of studying a lot of this, I actually had to take up a lot of breath work, I had to take up a lot of yoga, I had to take up a lot of meditation because my mental health crashed. When you're sitting there staring at scammers doing black magic and voodoo, it messes with your head. I'm a Christian, I grew up that way. It stuff messed with my head. And it was something where the things I have learned in this, I've been able to grow and overcome, but at the end of the day, the human body does not like stress. It does not like being in a stressful environment. In addition to that, a lot of that muscle and a lot of that stress manifests in different parts of our bodies. And our minds will actually protect us from that pain. So much so that when it comes to being in a tough situation, we will actually lie to ourselves to accept an alternative reality as opposed to actually processing the emotions for that. Because when you have to process a lot of hard emotions, a lot of painful emotions, it physically hurts. It hurts like hell. And that's a problem is we can choose to feel good and we can choose to feel bad. And at the end of the day, many of the victims don't know that this is something that we can do. And in talking with many of the cases and actually doing breath work with them over the phone, I have taken somebody who has been paranoid and schizophrenic for three years straight, has a family history, who is so paranoid about the scams that are targeting him that he thinks anybody driving on the side of the road with one headlight is out to get him. If I can walk him through five minutes of breathing exercise and actually calm him down to the point where he can think, there's more stuff here that we can do that we're, that we're only now learning to, to figure out. Um, and a lot of these hacks, they're not new. The science is finally starting to catch up, but many of these techniques are 5,000 years old. Many of these techniques are from our ancestors who went through stressful times that we are now need to kind of listen to and kind of learn through that. Um, and again, a lot of where this comes down to is be awesome to each other, collaborate. Every single one of us has a painful experience in life that we're working through and with a lot of the victims, they're very much the same thing. Nobody wants to go and work with the victims, but we have to change that. We have to start working with them. And if you've zoned out for the last 40 minutes and everything, here's 40 minutes in the slide. So in conclusion, when it comes to business email compromise, BEC is massive and it touches everything. You, I walked through how we've seen checks, how we've seen romance scam victims being hit, how we've seen phishing emails and so many other things being related back to the scams that when it comes to the single mindset of BEC, like throw that away, absolutely throw that mindset away. It's a waste, it's not useful and we need to get away from that. Um, share and collaborate the intelligence because at the end of the day, there's more people who are being hit by this. Actually educate your employees and embrace your employees. Again, your employees are not stupid and it's something where unless you're actually working with them to try and put content and education into their perspective that they will understand, you're gonna get nowhere. And there is no blinky box, and like I said, there's no blinky box of a Panda APT solution that you can buy that's gonna help fix that. We all know that, we're all trying to work on this to solve the human problem. Why not take that human problem back to what we know the problem is, the human. How can we work with that? How can we educate that user? How can we make it to where they can go ahead and report really good phishing emails, and what can we do from there? Um, Another thing, survey your email forward rules. I didn't mention this, but a lot of times your scammers will modify your email forward rule and you'll find other accounts on there for a different email compromise. 
and two factor all the things. So with that, here's my contact information and that is my presentation. So I have five minutes. Are there any questions? Yes. Yes, for those business, like, so I've seen multiple cases. I've seen cases where the account gets taken over. I have seen cases where folks like Black Axe will make a shell company and use that shell organization in order to wire the money on behalf of the scammers and everything. Turns out logistics companies are a very popular way to move large amounts of money, and that's one of the ways that they will do it is they'll make accounts like that. Um, I have a question. What you got? So I think with a lot of these sort of social engineering based things, right, obviously like employees are just individuals in the rest of our lives when we're not at our companies. Um, we're the last line of defense for ourselves, for you know our company, whatever. Do you have thoughts on how to educate people? Like what's effective messaging? Um, I think the FBI put out something recently and it was kind of, <laughs> Easy to make fun of because it sort of sounded like, oh, if you're on a dating site and anybody shows interested in you, yeah. like, it's not real. <laughs> yeah. So, do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, a lot of it kind of comes down to, and thanks for your question, a lot of it comes down to thinking, again, in the individual perspective. A lot of people, again, when they're working, they might have other things going on in their head. They might have had an argument with their spouse or something in the morning, and trying to put content in a way that that short attention span will be good to go, that might help. There's actually been a lot of studies coming out with um, this as TikTok has kind of changed a lot of the way our attentions are. Um, our attentions are getting much shorter. So if you're able to um, find content in a very short way and able to hook it at that perspective on the emotion side, that's one good way that's good to go. Um, I know on the cofence side, what we do is the way we approach it is we try to hook the users like right when they click, right if they click that phishing email to say, no, here's your education. And we try and embrace that one little piece because in that emotional state, you're able to overwrite that memory, overwrite that subconscious, and be like, okay, this was a fish, but I was able to learn in that regard. So that's kind of our, that's kind of how we approach it, so. Hey, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, quick question on <clears throat> multi-hop multi uh, transition of the money from the victim to the unwilling mules and, to, uh, and further to the another unwilling mule. Mm -hmm. The question is, in your experience, do you think it's the same group operating behind all, all, all those mules? So for example, if one is romance scam, the second is uh, some pig butchering or, mm -hmm. or like an, an initial was from a BAC uh, business compromise. Mm -hmm. Is it the same group behind or are they are communicating within like their circle yeah. with the other criminal groups to like, you know, to help them to, to basically loan their receipts? Yeah, so, when, so in terms of BEC and pig butchering, um, I am currently tracking those as separate. Um, I have not seen any overlap yet. Um, so Nigeria and then the, the Southeast Asia stuff. Um, in terms of romance scams and BEC things, um, the way that that works is imagine a toolbox. Imagine that you're a plumber and you're really, really good at doing plumbing. You know really good pipes on how to work with that. And then you know an electrician who's really, really good at doing electricity. So you might say, hey, I have this job where I need to go and build this house. And by putting the two of you together, you can go and build the house. The scammers work in the same way. They may have somebody who's really good at sending the phishing emails. They might have somebody who's really good with working with the romance scams. They might know somebody who's really good working with the gift cards. And that's what they'll do is the, the several of them will work together. Um, I like the toolbox analogy because just again, from what we've seen, the way Nigerian culture is, that's the closest I've been able, that's the closest analogy I've been able to articulate that. Um, so think of it as a, okay, if you're going to scam, what type of pieces could you do to make the scam work? Um, just a quick follow up to this. So um, it, it's like multi-hop uh, money laundering creates additional risks for them. Mm -hmm. That's 100% that's right? So, right, so yeah. you, you are, you're raising the risk. Like why do they have this risk appetite rather than like uh, uh, trying to money launder on the hop, on the, after one hop? Um, a lot of the reason that they do that is in order to mask the transactions. So if you have 
let's say you have, like, like take the, the fifth, let's take the $16,000 check and everything. That went through a work from home victim, went to the romance scam victim, and then that got sent in $15,000 cash up to the other person. So now if you were going to pull that $16,000 check, being able to tie that $15,000 is going to be a different number. So usually as practitioners, we're looking for that same number. Each hop, it, you, they usually lose about 10 to 15%. Yep. But at the end of the day, they're still making a lot of money for that. So it's because of that anonymity that they're willing to take that multi-hop piece. Um, in addition to that, it's something where it's still working for them. So. Does that, answer, does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay, just cool. risks for them and on, yeah. on losing this on on, mm -hmm. on one of the stage is, is yep. significant. Like you're yeah. dr dragging like the, the your your pot yep. into into the same. Area. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's and because of that risk, they're still doing it and stuff. But like, but yeah, they're still willing to do it. So and I believe it's because of that that extra anonymity for doing it is why they're willing to do it. Um, and even like if you go talk with law enforcement, where you have this one romance scam victim. Um, you're not going to get the full story, so even collaborating across that, it becomes very difficult. So it's a it's a multi web that they use. Um, if you want to look up other things on that phenomenon, um, look up something called Hawala networks, because what happens is because of those Hawala networks, they're able to use those alternative means, and we see similar principles being used for the easy. So. Where do they get exclusive uh, Amazon. Yep. So, so for those who are on the recording, the question was, where did I get this awesome um, raptor or T-Rex cat with lasers being pointed out of their eyes that I was like, I'm not wearing a suit on a stage at RSA. Um, it was on Amazon. So they are uh, amazing. You could get taco cats, a uh, bunch of different ones. So, yep. Thank you.